Good afternoon, YouTube. Today's video, we're going to talk about Cilium with F5 Big IP. So this is a new CNI that um, we've added to Big IP CIS, specifically with the Cilium 1.12 release. So let's take a look at some of the contributions that were initially made. So Cilium was actually contributed to F5CIS by Vincent. So Vincent, thank you so much for the contribution. You were able to at least get it in. It, the piece that was missing was the VNI or VTIP piece. And so Vincent's done a great job with his documentation and I'm gonna link to his documentation from my docs. We also have the F5 cloud docs as well that talks a little bit about kind of the prerequisites. So you can kind of see here that Cilium version 1.12 and newer is supported. I'm using 1.5, but I see 1.6 just came out. Uh, sorry, um, 1.12.5 is what I'm using, um, but 1.12.6 just came out, so that's fine. Uh, make sure your kernel's up to date. I'm actually using RHEL 8. Um, it's fine. It works great. And use the latest version of CIS. Um, I'm testing with 126. Uh, this was tested with 124. So it doesn't really matter. But um, what I want to do is just kind of talk a little bit about the setup. So in the last couple of days, I've tested Flannel, Calico, and now Cilium. And to be honest, the configuration of Cilium is very similar to Flannel. Um, however, there, there are some additional work that needs to happen within the VTIP specifically on the Cilium side. So it's not as easy, but the advantages of Cilium um, are, 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 are quite big. Um, I do see a lot of the community um, talking about Cilium at KubeCon, for etc., for exe for et uh, and less about Flannel. Um, I'm going to create another video in the next couple of days to talk about the pros and cons of each of the CNIs. I'm also going to share some survey information about uh, the percentages of kind of who's using what. So let's take a look. Again, Vincent's documentation is here, um, also on how to set this up. So you'll notice that my self IP on my big IP is, or my VTIP interface for under the cloud is 192.168.200.60. So that's the self IP for the internal interface that's facing the Kubernetes cluster. So very similar with Flannel is that we need to create this tunnel VXLAN on the following port for multipoint. So this is this is very similar. And so you can actually see this on Big IP if we actually go down to networking, if we actually go to the tunnels, and this is what I created, but this here is what was created. So let's just go down to this tunnel list and down to the profile list and VXLAN. This is what, she, what was created. So this is the first step is to create this. I, I would not recommend change the port. Just leave it default. Make sure if that there's a firewall in the path, make sure you open the firewall, right? The bidirectional firewall on port um, 84. 8472, and I think this is actually, this most likely is probably UDP, um, but just double check on that. And so once you've created that, then what you need to do is you need to go and create this FL VLAN or VXLAN here, um, specifically for the tunnel. So you can actually see there's the tunnel list, and then what I've done is I've created a profile. So this profile right here, there's a profile name called um, Flannel VXLAN. We just use this name um, just because it's easy. It, it could be anything. But if you look in the documentation, we use it over and over and over again uh, in my documentation. That's what I'm doing here. I'm creating this tunnel. I call it Flanex VXLAN. It's very similar to what we've done in the past. However, the key is different. That's really important. This key has to be two. Don't change this. This is the internal IP address of the big IP. And if you have two big IPs, you're going to create two of these. Um, you're probably going to need to increase maybe increment the, the, the key here. I, I have to actually set that up. Um, but that is the interface of the big IP. So you would create that on the big IP and that's what that would kind of look like. You can see there's the self IP. So now that you have a profile name and the profile name points to a profile, this profile needs to be referenced 
in the CIS configuration. So if we go take a look at the CIS configuration, you're going to see here that this name right here is going to be referenced as an argument. So if we go up to CIS deployment, take a look at the manifest, you will see there that is really important. That name has to be referenced right there in line number 48. If it's not re referenced, it won't work. Why? Because what's happening is CIS is actually propagating these FDB tunnel day. See these tunnel records right here? These are the records of the nodes. So this is the MAC addresses right here. And of course, these are the nodes. So 66 and 61, there's two nodes, a two node cluster here. You can see here um, the two node cluster. So that's why it's so important. So if you go look back here, you can actually test to see if this is working. Once CIS, when CIS is running. Now, if you want to remove those FDB entries, you have to shut down CIS because CIS is communicating with Big IP across using this API to update these. So you can see right here, 41, 42, these are the, these are the MAC addresses of the nodes, right? These are the F4 database entries that Big IP needs. So that's the first thing. Same thing with Flannel. There, there's no difference here. So now that I have the tunnel configured, the next thing I need to do is create a self-IP. So with that, with that self-IP, think of it as an over-the-cloud address that points you to the, the, the VXLAN. So what we're doing here is that we're creating a self-IP within, within, within over-the-cloud. Now, this is going to get a little confusing because this right here is not the pod cider. This is just, think of it as just a self-IP. It's a self-IP that exists and what it actually think of it does is it creates like a dummy node or like a dummy reference. Almost think of it as like kube proxy kind of, but it's not. It's just a dummy node um, or an entry point for big IP to connect to from over the cloud, and it points to the VXLAN. You see that? So that's how it, that that that's how big IP connects into the Kubernetes cluster through this VTIP IP address. And and I just made up an address here. I use six dot sixty. Could be anything. I just use the same octet as the at the end here. This is class C, right? So this is really important. You will see this here on the big IP. This is it right here. See? One dot sixty. It's um, class C, and it points to the VXLAN tunnel. So this is like over the cloud. It's over the cloud sub interface. So over the cloud, under the cloud. Um, that points to here. And then what I've done is I create a static route. So I basically say for the big IP to get to the pod subnet, and this is different than Flannel, for the big IP to get to the pod subnet right there, send all the traffic across that across that, uh, across that um, VXLAN tunnel. So that, that, that is pretty much, I wouldn't change too much of this. Try use, this is default. Try keep this by default. This can change, obviously, and if you're doing HA, then make sure that you um, you increment this. You can see right here, this is the Cilium Manage Pod Cider Network, 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And if we actually go and look at what this looks like, you can actually see here, I'm actually looking at the Cilium config map. And you can actually see here's the initial configuration. That's the that's the the pod network, and if I scroll down, what you're going to see in here is you're going to see the new pieces that's unique to Cilium, which is the VTIP information. So you can see right here, this is my over the cloud kind of like network. So this is how Big IP is able to communicate with Cilium through this network. This is the, the VTIP right here. So this is the Big IP VTIP. So this is what points to the the endpoint. There's the, there's the VTIP MAC address. So this MAC address is actually of that profile that we created earlier. So you need to know how to get that. And so I've, I've actually provided some docs on how to get that because that, 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 that is not in anywhere. So you can see right here that we created this tunnel earlier, right? This flannel VXLAN. So just go into TMSH and actually just do this all properties. You'll get that MAC address. So that's the MAC address here. From the tunnel pro from from the tunnel profile that you need to plug in here, see that. So when you plug that in there, that you get from the tunnel network, right? As long as these things are just kind of follow the order, everything will work. And so you can kind of see there's my example right there. 
big IP IP address. There's my uh, CIDR network, etc. So that's kind of how that that piece works. And you can see there's the VXLAN tunnels, and then the FDB entries kind of show up there. So there is the address right there. So you can kind of see how how that piece all works. And then you can configure your virtual. You can actually go and create a virtual server. This is using a CRD. You can see there's my virtual server right there. I have two pool members. And you can see those two pool members right there, 1 and 20. And you can actually see this if I cut this. You can actually see here are the pool members right here. So you can actually see there. So 10.1.10.0.1.225, 10.0.1.225, 10 are those two pool members right there. So big IP is showing green, so big IP can reach those pool members. So the tunnel communication is established. Um, so you're pretty much good to go uh, right there. So Kind of go back to my talk documentation here. Um, this page right here that I'm working on on the different CNIs um, kind of links to Vincent's page, which is which is really really excellently written. This is on the Cilium site, but um, on Vincent's page you can actually see his contribution. What I really like about what Vincent did is that he also covers how to configure this if you want to use Geneve. Right, so I'm 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 using VXLAN, but if you want to use Geneve, you can. That's just your choice if you want to use Geneve everywhere, um, and 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 that's kind of where the community is going. Uh, he also tells you kind of like how you edit the and how you do. You can actually do the Helm install here, where you can install part of it. I I didn't do that. I installed Cilium by itself and then went and updated the config map. I just thought that was easier because um, I wasn't ready. I didn't know the information when Cilium was installed, and and most likely that's the case. When Cilium gets installed, it's most likely installed through the administrator of Kubernetes, and you're not familiar with the big IPv tips. So you can come back and re-edit this, right? You will just edit this, this, this file like I did and add this information. Um, in, in my docs, it kind of goes through that. Just restart the daemon and kind of off you go. W one thing that I really like about what, um, what Vincent does is he actually puts an example here, big IP1, big IP2. And he talks about the network stack. So this is the difference with Flannel. Flannel, Flannel does not support HA uh, in a Kubernetes environment. And so when you're doing, if you're running full production, Cilium does, right? So you only have a choice. If you don't want to use Cilium, then the other option is to use uh, Calico, right? So that that's quite a significant difference. And, and I see so many people using um, just NodePort. And so now with Cilium integration, I think that you can start to see some more of that migration from NodePort over to Cilium because it is more production ready. It is more carrier grade, right? Especially, specifically with the eBPS stuff and the performance, the fine tuning that you can do within Cilium. And, and that's one of the reasons why I think the big benefit here. So connect to my virtual. You can kind of see here, 121, I'm kind of connecting to the virtual server. So you can kind of see that if I just get rid of the index, Dot HTML, just go back to the main page. You can kind of see that this this all works nicely. There's the virtual server right there on 21. So that's that's it pretty much for 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 this video. Um, again, really appreciate the contribution to the community. Um, I do actually see some users using this already, um, being probing the um, probing the install base and have actually seen some users using it, which I believe is in production. So that's good to see. And I'm, I'm going to see that. Um, obviously, I'm going to see that growth. I'm going to see more and more and more users using it. Um, and so I really like it. And in fact, I'm gonna actually going to make this my standard. Um, I really like Calico, but I think Cilium is actually kind of cool. I want to do some tweaking in Cilium next, potentially, um, to, to kind of see if I can improve the performance. Um, but again, it's it's most likely big IP directly to the pod. So um, so that's it for this video. If you like this content, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm almost at 350 subscribers. 
Um, really appreciate the time. Look out for an up and coming video on the different CNIs and the benefits. And um, have a lovely day. Thank you.